All right, guys, Dave here. <laughs> Welcome back. I do appreciate you checking in. Now, we're getting real close. All we need to do, okay, for, for one thing, um, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, there's a part one, there's a part two, and a part three to get this far. So we put together these tie rod ends last time. What we need to do is put a couple tack welds on here just to hold them all together. I mean, they're pretty tight, but they'll definitely come apart when, when this thing starts moving. I'm also kind of considering just cutting out this one little section here. Um, of course, once everything is moving, we definitely want to weld these a little bit better. Um, right now, they're just tacked on. Pretty much everything's just tacked on. So, all right, so let's clean these things up with some acetone, hit them with a couple tack welds. I know these are real small. So if you take a look at my three degree of freedom, these things are like 31 inches. Gives a lot of mechanical advantage to these big motors. But then again, on this thing, I'm moving the whole frame and not just the seat. This is a flux core welder. So you're always gonna have some kind of dust or crap come off of it when it's welding. So if you have a gas welder, you won't have to deal with all the residue from the uh, flux core. Um, it'll, it'll just come out way nicer anyway. But uh, yeah, these tacks should be just fine. And um, if, if they're not good, you can just grind them down um, with your, gr with your uh, angle grinder and use a vice grip. You can just pull the thing apart again and reuse it. Like this particular set, I've used them well, at least a couple different times. So let's get this other one done. All right, guys, so little thing happened. I was tightening up the bolt and, yep, she just came, sh it sheared straight off. So I had to sort of just tack it around here and a little bit on the bottom. Um, after I did each tack, I cooled it down. I made sure that the motor was running. Um, so this ought to be good, but on this one, what I'm going to do is just take off, I tighten it down. I don't want this to happen again because that was kind of a pain. I should be able to tack it right here. And same thing, I put a tack weld on, I cool it down with a, a wet rag, and then run the motor once just to make sure everything is going good because I don't want to, I don't want to like run a whole bead around here. All right, so live and learn. You've got a hole in the inside like this already. like hardened so it should you should have really no real big issues i'm not doing a drill press because of the uh, flexible airline so it's going to compensate for any weirdness that uh, you know I, I don't have since this is fixed at some point we got to slide the bolt in Let's fit it in here slide the bolt in and now we can uh, cinch it up We'll do the same for the other side. All right, guys, so I went ahead and made this little uh, container. Well, I bought it and uh, kind of modified it so that I can fit <coughs> the two IBT 2s, the Ar Arduino, and a power um, connector, connector strip. Okay, so the IBTs, they need active cooling. So I've got this 12 volt fan. Um, we're just going to go ahead and Put it together like this and drop it right on top. All right, so this whole thing, pretty cool little setup. Uh, it's a brushless uh, fan. It's going to blow air down on the components and specifically keep the IBTs uh, nice and nice and cool um, 
There are a bunch of different holes that I drilled in here just to let heat escape, but the whole profile um, should fit right underneath. Well, basically, you can do this any way you want. I made it so that it will fit under here even when uh, the chair is down. Um, or we could actually mount it maybe a little bit farther forward right on the ground. But it's as low as I could get it, or at least as, as uh, thin as I could get it. So, I mean, it, sh it should be just fine. So just another alternative might be just to mount it in, in here, right uh, flush with the floor, put a little piece of metal in here and potentially slide it in. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, that might work pretty good too. So the air is blowing down. So it's blowing down and out of the holes. Uh, this 12 volt fan should be just fine as far as clearance. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do it right here. Okay, so I've got the 12 volt fan and I'm, I have this uh, power strip in here. So I've got positive and negative uh, for the battery and that's going to run the fan all, all the time. Um, we're going to have an on and off switch, an emergency on and off switch. The motors, uh, the blue and black, that goes back to, you know, one of these motors. Um, so I ran them both up here. I am going to mount the box right here. I just put a little bit of brackets in. So uh, let me just wire up a little bit. Now, yeah, I know the wires look a little bit messy, but, you know, you do your best to just try to keep it uh, organized. Something that's cool that I learned is this uh, little power strip. When you're making your controls in here, all you need to do is just basically hook one side, all the motor stuff and everything to it. And then that way your motor uh, wires are free so that when you wanna um, disconnect them or swap them around, I mean, it's, n it's really not that big of a deal. And right inside here, I mean, I, I just have this uh, hollowed out just a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, the 12 volts is gonna hook right here and the two motors are right here. All right, we're getting there. I've got the battery hooked up, the two motors hooked up. Everything's on that uh, strip. Let's just plug this thing on. And make it easy for yourself. Like if, if, uh, if it's too much of a pain to, to mount it, you know, maybe right here. Oh, look around for some other place. This looks pretty, pretty good. I'm probably not the best, but you know, I can move this around. So you need an emergency on off switch. And this may not be the best place to put it, but it's super stable. It's actually welded in and the breaker just fits in there. Uh, the return, return wires, those are the ones I'm switching. Okay, so to mount the potentiometers, I decided I'm just going to bend a couple little pieces right here. All right, so I'm getting ready to mount up the second potentiometer. We got the first one here. Uh, basically, make a bracket that's going to fit. And uh, I made it fit up against this one little piece of metal here. And I'll just tack it on and then I'll draw it out here and then a little piece of air hose to connect between the, the molly and the end of the potentiometer. So let me get this one set up. All right guys, everything's going good up until now. Okay, I got this motor's working just fine. This motor worked for like a second and then it might have worked for a little bit. This is motor one and this is motor two. And, ah, uh, crap, you know, I had to take everything kind of back out just to take a look around. And looking at this, the wiring diagram, so I traced out pin one on the IBT, and it goes to Arduino pin two, way over here. Pin two goes to pin nine, which was fine. Pin three and four solder together and they go to Arduino three. Now, this is what I found. When I pulled three off, 
and I did a continuity test, it just basically broke off. So, oh, sorry. So you can see two and three there, that's the green and the yellow right here. And, you know, I mean, I did have everything on and it just broke off. So that, I, <laughs> that's got to be the problem why motor one isn't working. So let me just get this soldered back in, tuck everything back in and give it another test. All right, so let's just fix this thing real quick. Now, sorry I don't have an actual screen capture running, but once again, if I turn the potentiometer, the green line should be moving, and I'm getting the yellow line is some type of uh, pulse width. I've got the minimum on 60, max at 109, and reverse at 109. So you can kind of see it moving around. Now, I'm going to turn the motor on, and... Uh And I have the minimum at 60 and I don't know if that's going to do anything or not but it seemed to help the motor so these are all kind of tunable uh, these aren't going to be the final settings that we're going to put it at but for right now both motors are working well anyway I think we're good for today the next step really is just to get it on a sim um, I'll show you how to bring it next next episode. I'll show you how to bring up sim tools and set this up for different um, different ways of <laughs> there's a bug different ways of motion um, All that I'm going to cover it and we'll click through it and uh, Hopefully these things have enough power to move my big butt around. I don't know if they will or not and But you don't know this is all experimental science, so you know, welcome to the club if you if you like this kind of stuff. I do. 
sometimes is a little frustrating. Hey, how about that broken wire? Yeah, well, important. If things aren't working right, you know, just try to noodle it over one step, one wire at a time. And that's what I did. And yep, the thing was broken. That's the reason that why that motor wasn't working. It's not because of any of this stuff, and it's not because of just frustration or being in a, you know, not having good luck. This stuff does work. It's just everything has to be hooked up. And uh, all right, guys. Man, it is still like 95 degrees out here. I'm looking forward to some cooler weather and uh, sitting in this thing. So next time, we're in it. Dave out.